Recently, we picked up a heap of RTX 3060s from a Cyclone Hurricane damaged PC uh, pickup. And what we got was a heap of RTX 3060s working. However, the thermal pads were all brittle and they just were not going to do a job of doing any cooling at all. So what I decided was to go on AliExpress and take a look at thermal pads. But while I was taking a look at thermal pads, I was presented with all these options. And of course, the price was ranging as well, depending on what we got. So I decided just to test them all and do a video for you guys as well, just to see what my answers were going to be in terms of which is the best value thermal pad or is there any difference between these real absurd high numbers that these companies are throwing out versus just the generic thermal pads here, which are the cheapest. So this is just a standard blue ones that have got six watts cooling per meter Kelvin. And basically I like the cheap stuff because you need a lot of it. In this case, I've got to replace thermal pads of at least 10, 30, 60s. So I'm gonna need a lot of this stuff, the two mil pads. And also I'm gonna be testing without any thermal pads too versus these four in the lineup here. But next up, we've got the Max Tool, which I believe Max Tool used to make hard drives back in the day, if I'm not mistaken. But it seems like they've maybe switched into the thermal pad market and they're claiming a massive 14.8 watts per meter Kelvin versus the original six. But then besides that, we've got a newcomer here, Up Siren, and they're claiming even more than Max Tool. They're going for a huge 21 watts per meter Kelvin. And besides that, we've got the lucky last in the group here, which don't make any claims in terms of their cooling performance, but it's Gelid. And Gelid in the past have won a thermal paste comparison that I've done back in the day. And so this brand is reliable when it comes to cooling products. And so we're going to go with them as the last contender in the bunch, even though they were definitely the most expensive out of the four contenders here. But let's get into this. We'll get first of all done here, the control sample with no thermal pads on at whatsoever on the VRAM, and then we'll start chucking all these thermal pads on the VRAM and check out the differences. Do you need to get Windows 10 or Windows 11 activated and don't want to spend $200 or some other exorbitant price? Well, if so, today's video sponsor, VIP SCD Keys, has you covered. For as little as $15 using the coupon code BFTYC, you can get Windows 10 activated. For a little bit more, you can get Windows 11 activated too. Links in the description below to find out more. So we came into a mishap while we were getting these results done. And that happened when we put the RTX 3060 back together. We logged in and we tried to look at our memory temperatures and we just couldn't access them. They just were not there. And then I tried some other 3060s around here. I actually had three different models in total here and none of them would show the memory temperatures, the VRAM temperatures. So we had to then look for a model that was pretty quick, pretty small, and we could change over the thermal pads easy without putting 10 plus screws back in. And so we had this 5060 eight gigabyte and who would have known this would be what the 5060 was intended for. It was intended for a thermal pad comparison. <laughs> Here's where we've got some actually really shocking results here where we're gonna pull it up straight away for you guys with all these results because we're also going to include after these results, we're getting the winner and then we're gonna change the thermal pads on the RX 9070, which for me, the RX 9070, as well as the 9070 XT, their VRAM temperatures do get a little bit hot, at least outside my comfort zone. I like to keep my VRAM temperatures under 80 degrees at all times if I can, but these like to shoot past 80 degrees, especially on default settings. Anyhow, we've got here the default Zotac thermal pads, and here's where they hit 46 degrees. Now, we were testing here in the morning, and it was about 14 degrees ambient, so it's pretty cold. And then when we moved over to, to no thermal pads whatsoever, we went all the way up to 62 degrees. So basically you wanna have thermal pads on your VRAM because it is definitely gonna help at least the, to the tune of 16 degrees on an RTX 5068 gigabyte from Zotac. And then when we move over to the El Cheapos, these are just the blue banger specials that I am gonna be heavily recommending after this video, uh, after these results we got 50 degrees, which is respectable considering how much thermal pad you get for your money. But then we move over to the Up Siren. This was the newcomer. This was the one who had something to prove with these huge numbers they were boasting. This actually scored pretty good. We're getting 44 degrees, so two degrees lower than the default Zotac settings. However, we move across now to Max Tor, and this scored pretty much identical 
results here. And I mean, it looked identical and then it performed identical. So probably coming from the same factory, which would kind of put a curveball in things where Up Siren is kind of selling that 21.8 watts, I think it is, per meter Kelvin versus the Max Store's 14. So they virtually performed identical here, at least within the one degree mark of each other. And then we've got the last one, which was shocking to me, was the Gelid getting 54 degrees. Now, this to me just seems like when I was trying these thermal pads out, they were just incredibly cheap. They were hard and they were just cheap and they just crumble. And to get this bad temperatures from a so-called gelid thermal pad leads me to believe either two things. These are either a fake, which I, I think is highly possible, or they've just been sitting in a packet for who knows how long, years and years. And then it's ended up in that like crumbly hard state because that's not what I expect from gelid performing 54 degrees and getting close to that of getting a score close to nothing, where on the packet they're saying, well, it's coming in 10 degrees better than your regular thermal pads. Well, it's actually coming in four degrees worse than our regular thermal pads. So that was kind of shocking to see, but regardless of that fact, we've got our, what looks like fake gelid pads here, not doing the job. Bit of an update here mid video. I noticed on the gelid packaging, there was an authentication label that you can scratch and it reveals a code. Then you go to the website and you can verify if the product you received was a, a genuine gelid product or not. And indeed the product was confirming that this was a genuine product. However, the performance is just that lackluster. I had to take it a step further and send a message to Gelid to confirm that these were genuine thermal pads because I noticed with the ad as well on AliExpress that the thermal pads look actually a different tinge of gray and they look a lot darker than what's being advertised in the actual listing. So weird one there. I'll definitely update the comments and what progresses with these Gelid pads and how they respond to me going forward. And then we've got our Banger Blues. This is the thermal pad that I'm going to be recommending for most mid-range and low-end uh, thermal pad application changes because you're just getting so much thermal pad for your money. I've actually gone and changed all, or put on now, all thermal pads on those RTX 3060s that we picked up from that Hurricane Cyclone damaged PC pickup, and we've still got thermal pad left to spare. And then the Max Tor and the Up Siren, I'd say, Whichever one is cheaper, if you want to use a more high-end thermal application, that is going to be the go. Uh, these do feel like they're a little bit higher quality than the blues here. And of course, the temperatures prove that as well. But in terms of the differences between the two, I'd say that very minimal. And this is where I decided to also throw in some bonus tests here with the RX 9070, the Steel Legend from ASRock, which was already scoring pretty decent VRAM temperatures, at least when I compared it to the a uh, Hellhound edition from uh, Power Color. And here's where we got the same temperatures after 10 minutes of stress testing the VRAM. So we got 72 on the ASRock default pads, and then we got 72 degrees with the MaxTor pads. So basically identical there. And even when I looked at the pads themselves, they looked identical. So I believe this sort of gray pad that does and i will say one thing they do crumble after one use so once you put them on and then you put your gpu together once you take off this gray kind of thermal pad it's pretty much a one and done you're gonna have to redo them again as opposed to the blues they seem to be a little bit more sturdier and they seem to go the mile so uh, taking off the cooler and then taking off the pads after at least one session of usage there was no breakage or no even hint of them breaking as opposed to these gray ones they just started to crumble and also the fake uh, gelid ones, they started to crumble as well. So <laughs> we had some crumblage here on anything but the blue thermal pads, uh, whether it was the Zotac default pads we were pulling off or the RX 9070 uh, ASRock pads. But it is good to see that the GPU manufacturers, at least Zotac and ASRock are using good uh, thermal pads to begin with. However, it is sad, very sad to see that these gelid pads are in circulation and they're performing this poorly but it's also then the last thing it's good to see that these up siren and these max store brands are doing pretty well too and they're selling you decent thermal pads but then of course their value blues 
there i think they get the victory here today just for being the at least for what i'm doing with these gpus that i come into a lot of these 3060s or whether it's say rtx 3070s and things like that and they just need new thermal pads these are going to be my go-to recommendation for people who are just looking for value to replace uh, thermal pads on their used graphics cards that they're either picking up off the market or they're pulling out of their own system and they just don't want to spend that much on thermal pads and with that said there's not much more to touch on the topic if i did miss something or there's something else you want to know then be sure to drop a comment down in the comment section below and i'll get back to you as soon as i can and also let us know what your thoughts are on thermal pads and which thermal pads have you been using if there's something that's not in this video here today would love reading your thoughts and opinions as always and with that aside i'll catch you in another tech video very soon peace out for now bye